I feel like the concept of sacrifice, I was just talking about this with a friend yesterday, that the concept of sacrifice is not actually talked about that much in our society. And I I know in Christianity, like the cross symbolizes sacrifice and that that's a big part of even Judaism, like it, Mm -hmm. but it was not well explained to me that you give up something now for something greater in the future. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily even have to be directly related to you or finances or anything like that. It is, Mm -hmm. what am I willing to put down so that my life is somehow different, so that the contribution I'm making is somehow larger? Did you have a sophisticated understanding of sacrifice? No, I, I can say, yeah, no. It didn't click with me until I started listening to Jocko. It didn't click. And it, it's odd because I do have faith. I was raised in a Christian church. My mom was very dedicated. Um, we would do family groups where you'd have the kids and the parents and you'd all come together and we'd play Bible games as a kid. Um, I struggled a lot, though, as a kid because I, w- I also loved science and nobody could rectify that, the Bible and science. And I'm like, I don't totally believe this thing, but how do they tie together? And so it was a, it took me time as I got to be an adult to say, you know what? These two things can actually get along. Um, That was my staggering realization when I started listening to Jordan Peterson. Yes. Because there are few people you will ever meet in the world that know more Bible stories than this guy right here. Like I know the Bible (laughs) from my picture Bible cold. I was the obnoxious kid in Sunday school that was like, Oh, please pick me, (laughs) pick me because they were all stories. And I love stories, Uh but I never really understood that those stories can stand on their own as whether or not you believe that there is deep religion or there's God there, those stories help you understand when I confront a situation that is similar to this, yep. that there's some there's some guide here and that those stories have lasted for 2000 years because they tell us things about human nature. Yes. And that was really important to me. That's why Peterson so had had such a big impact on my life because all of a sudden, all of this knowledge that I had of random Bible stories, which was no different than the mm-hmm. Avengers to me, right? Yeah. It was just like random stories. Yeah. Now all of a sudden I would be like, oh my gosh, think about the story of Abraham being willing to sacrifice his son. Or why is a brother, Cain killing Abel, why is that the ultimate terrible thing? And why is that all the way in the beginning of the Bible? Why is that the first thing that we start with? Uh None of these stories had context into my life. They weren't sewn in there. They were divorced. And that was really impactful to me. Yeah. So I just started, I shared with you that I just started reading 12 Rules for Life. Oh, or, yeah. Right? I didn't know that. Yes. You did? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm only a chapter in, but it, I that was a really interesting revelation when I was reading the prologue and then started reading the book. 12 Rules for Life is the Jordan the Peterson book. The Jordan Peterson book, book yeah. And it, it's really interesting how he takes the biblical verses and turn and explains this is what you're... <laughs> supposed to learn out of it. I'm like, why did I not learn this in church? What the heck? But I I do have tremendous faith. And like I said, I, along my journey over the last year, I feel like I've had God winks along the way. And I don't know if you believe in those or your listeners do, but it was a way for me to feel like I was on the right path. And there were little things that you could not Some people may call them coincidences or just random things that happen, but you could not make these things all happen every time the way that they happened. And some of them were small. Some of them probably people think are silly, but it was still to me, it was like a door opening to say, you're here. This is the right path you're supposed to be on. In this moment, you're supposed to be here. And I had those every time I'd go to a chemo treatment there'd be a little sign along the way. Every time I'd go to a new doctor, the day that we went to Mayo the first time, there was a little sign. The last surgery that I had last November, I finished my, I was 
miserable. I had been down here doing deployment discussions and I had lost my voice and I was not feeling that great. And I was like, man, I have a surgery scheduled for next week. Should I just postpone it? Went into the doctor. They said everything was fine. I was cleared for surgery. But in the back of my head, I started doubting it. I started doubting the pushing. You've been through, this would be your fourth surgery in six months. Is it worth it? Is it worth it to just say you want to be done with all of this or do you just take a break and you'll get it done? And, and I'm like, no, just be done. Just keep pushing, Christy. Just be done so you can start your next chapter. You can start working out and you can start putting this all to build yourself to be the new Christy that you're going to become. And is that the way you thought of it? Is that the way you think of it? I, I, there's I'm a new not Christy? the same person. OK. Physically, mentally, emotionally, I'm stronger, tougher braver than I ever would have dreamed. I, I uh, in, in no way have faced anything to what you're talking about, but I feel like once I understood the concept of sacrifice, mm -hmm. the concept of becoming someone that I always wanted to be mm -hmm. became real. Oh yeah. And, and until you understand what that word is, then you don't really have a way you're, you're like, I'm giving up something or I'm investing or, but you don't really I'm gonna do know it for it. a week. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> where, where all of a sudden, like Jocko talks about that, uh, you don't need motivation. You need discipline. Yep. Motivation wanes. Discipline doesn't. Oh yeah. It sucks to get up at four 30. Like this morning I was like, I've already worked out Sunday, Monday, this is Tuesday. I'll get my five. Cause my goal is five workouts a week. I started a year ago the only two week day, weeks that I haven't is two weeks I got sick. And I just was, it, maybe Jacko would say, uh, come on. No, I was just too sick. I was, I needed to recover. Um, but as soon as I felt good enough, I was like, okay, I'm doing something. And I won't let myself slip. I used to go on business trips and I wouldn't pack my workout gear. Now, screw it. You're not taking that away from me. This is too important for my life. I'm going to make time no matter where I am. It's important. Um, and once you like that, the, the other thing that goes along with sacrifice is suffering. And suffering is an interesting concept because you only suffer un, right up until the moment when you accept that suffering. And now it's something you enjoy. It's something you want. Mm -hmm. Like I, I lifted weights for years and I was only doing it because I was like, I need to do it. I've got to do it. But the whole time I accepted the fact that it was terrible and I hated it and didn't want anything to do with it. Right up until the moment when I was like, wait a second, when you get to that ninth and 10th rep and it's really hard and you want to stop, that's when all of the good stuff is. Yep. And so you quit feeling like the the pain that I'm going through or the fatigue that I'm going through. Now you're not trying to avoid it. You're actually leaning into it. Yeah. And then it, the, all of these things that you've been carrying around like burdens, they're, they're no not. longer burdens. Yep. So it. You know, you can you can make your life be as miserable and fall into that dark hole like the phone. The phone rings and you get news that you never, ever wanted to hear in your life. You get a knock on your door and you find out a family member died. You don't get the job you wanted. All of those things could could make you spiral in work. It could make you spiral personally or you could say, OK, what can I learn? How can I grow? How can I change this moment into something positive? And I had a little bit of that. I mean, I, I think generally I was an optimist, but man, when you face your worst fear and you have to say, okay, how am I going to show up and be still be as much of a mom as I can be? Maybe I can't pick up my kids and I can't play with them the way that I would want to be. I still want to be able to go to bed and say prayers with them and sing songs with them and create memories with them and have life lessons. How am I going to turn this into good? How am I going to turn this into, I'm going to, I'm going to get through chemo. I'm going to get through all the dumb surgeries. I'm going to go to all the stupid appointments. I can complain about it or I can say, you know what? Good. Good. Give this me, a, give me this growth opportunity. And it, it has truly been a growth opportunity. I could be angry and miserable and close the door to people that I care about and choose that path. I, I know people in my life who have chosen that path. 
and you leave a wake of a lot of people dealing with you not being there. Yeah, that's right. So if you actually care and want to be there for the people that you love, you need to figure out a way to make it good. When I was running my 500 miles this year, I was maybe into March. We had a really cold winter and it just mm-hmm. kept going on and on. So I'm up at 445 in the morning going going for my long run. And I had been carrying the image of a person that I was trying to beat or to overcome with uh-huh. me. And I thought that that was helping me. And I remember Goggins one time, David Goggins, yep. who's the, the guy that wrote the book Can't Hurt Me, which I really was uh-huh. impactful to me. He was like, hey if you drag that person in your mind out there with you, the physical person doesn't have to do any of that terrible work with you, Uh but you're stuck with the person who you don't want to be around and their company. And you're like now stuck out there. You're not making them deal with your suffering. You're just dragging them along. And I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. And then I quit doing things to spite other people, my, my suffer. And I think that these are all stages that people have to go through as they're learning about their suffering, overcoming resistance, and then not dragging your, your bad baggage to try and beat somebody else. Like there's, there's a lot to all of this. Yeah. 